everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. You are going to love this one. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers. I am so glad that you are choosing to spend this time with me. And even if you're not a subscriber, thank you so much for choosing to be a part of my channel right now. We've been making notebooks and journals and today is no different. We're going to make this awesome, awesome notebook and it has a water resistant front and back. I'm going to give you a closer look in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here's a closer look at today's awesome project. When finished, it is going to measure five by seven, and I have 50 sheets of white writing paper on the inside, and the white writing paper is simply copier paper or printer paper. And what we have is somewhat of a frosted look because we have a cover over the cover. So when you open this, you can see that we have this cover here, and then we have our beautiful decorative paper. And the same is true on the back. We have that protective cover on the back, and then we have our beautiful cover underneath. And then on the inside, I simply went through and I added some stickers to the pages so that the pages would have some sweet interest to them. And what I did was I took an entire 12 by 12 sticker sheet, and I just used that throughout the book. So I just took all of the little elements that were on that sheet and I put them on the pages in the book just to give it some interest. Super easy to make. Here's what you're going to need to make it. So to make the outside cover, I'm using some of these flexible chopping mats from the Dollar Tree. You get two in a pack and they're a dollar and a quarter for two. Mine were actually a dollar because I bought them when things were still a dollar at the Dollar Tree. I just decided to stock up and stash a whole bunch of these knowing that the change was eventually coming. You get two in a pack and so from one chopping mat you're able to make two books. So from this whole pack you're able to make four books. And so here's what I have. I have two pieces cut at five by seven. Then I have two pieces of decorative cardstock and this is Prima and it's cut at four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And then I have my 50 sheets of white writing paper, also cut at four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And then I have some coils. So if you're looking for these coils, I will have a link in the description box below. It will not be a link for the pink ones because I bought these pink coils many, many moons ago. The coils that I'm using on this project, no joke, these coils are probably about eight to 10 years old. I've had them in my stash, decided to pull them out. And I believe these were actually from We Are Memory Keepers, but I'm not sure. But I will have a link in my Amazon storefront showing you where I actually purchase coils when I want other colors or other sizes. Now these coils are so pliable that you don't need a We Are Memory Keepers cinch to be able to close them. So on my project, I am going to be using my cinch to punch my holes. But if you don't have a We Are Memory Keeper cinch, not to worry because you can still do this project. So I'm going to show you how to punch your holes if you don't have a cinch. This is how you can create a template for yourself if you want to. So I have my ruler on the seven inch side and I'm going to start making marks at the three quarters of an inch point. So we'll start there. And with those coils, you're going to make a mark every half inch. My next mark would be at one and a quarter. My next mark would be at one and three quarters. My next mark would be at two and a quarter. The next mark would be at two and three quarters. The next mark would be at three and a quarter. And then three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters. And then my final mark is going to be at six and a quarter. So this is how you would mark off. Your first mark is going to be at three quarters of an inch. Then you're going to have a mark every half inch after that. So what that means for these coils 
is that they're considered a two to one ratio. And that means that you have two holes per inch. So two holes to one inch. So when you see a coil that says it has a three to one ratio, that means that it's three holes for every inch. If you see a four to one ratio, that means that it's four holes to one inch. But for the cinch, it is a two to one ratio. And that means that you have two holes per inch. And this would be your guide for how you would actually punch your holes. You would simply take a piece of paper that is seven inches long and then start marking off the way that I've done it here. So hopefully that little walkthrough and explanation will help you when you're trying to decide where I need to punch my holes. And as most of you probably know, I think that my cinch is a first generation cinch from We Are Memory Keepers, but it still gets the job done. The newer cinches come with a little bit more features, I think, but for me, this is fine. So the way that the cinch works is you have pegs numbered one through 12, and you decide where you want your holes to punch. When you want a hole to punch, you make sure that that peg is pressed in. If you don't want a hole to punch, you simply pull the peg out. Hopefully you can see how that one is protruding. And a hole will not punch if the peg is pulled out. I want all of my holes punched because I want a full 12 holes on my project. What I like about the cinch and why I use it a lot when I'm making books is because it will punch through chipboard. It will punch through 25 sheets of printer paper. So for me, it really does expedite my bookmaking process. All right, and for those of you who have a center, you're not really sure how to use it. What I need to do is find the center of my board. And I know that this is seven inches. And the ruler here also happens to be seven inches. So what I'm going to do is move my ruler over to the three and a half inch mark. So you can see that my three and a half inch point is lined up with my center point right there. And now I'm good to go. So I'm going to take my cover, put it in, and I'm going to punch. You should be able to see that my punches pretty much match up with the template that I drew. So this is my cover. This is going to be the inside cover and I'm going to place it in just like this. And I'm going to punch. So these two will match just like this. Then I'm going to take my back cover and your back cover needs to be turned upside down and put in and punched. And I'll put my back mat cover in and punch. So now I have my covers front and back. I am just going to take my papers, make sure that I have those in. And then we're just going to punch. And if you don't have a cinch, you can still do this project. You just need to punch the holes using a handheld hole punch. So then when I'm finished, I'm going to have all of this. I do have a little catch drawer for these pieces. Don't know where it is, but it's easy to scoop them up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that top cover, place it down, take the top cover for it, and place it down. Then I'm going to take the back cover and with it placed face down, just like that, I'm going to place it down and I'll take that back cover piece and we'll place it down. So on your cinch, you're going to have these notches on the side and that is basically designed to hold your wire and make it easier for you to put your book together. Very rarely do I use that. I actually just feed my coils through, but I thought I'd do a full walkthrough. So there we have our coils on. I'm going to remove it, and this is how it looks right now. So I'm going to turn my cinch around, and on this side, you're going to have knobs. My knob only goes down to three quarters of an inch. I think some of the newer cinches go down to a quarter of an inch for the coils. So if my coil is smaller than three quarters of an inch, 
I have to cinch it by hand, but because it's three quarters of an inch, I'm going to be able to put this in and cinch. So we have this handle on the back. And when you push it down, it causes the coils to compress. All right, so I have changed the angle of my camera so that you can see exactly what it is I'm doing here. So I'll take my book with the coils like this. We're going to put it in and then I'll take that handle and I'll just start pressing down. And then I like to take mine, flip it over and start pressing from this side as well. That helps me to get that rounded closure that I like. So you can see all of my grooves are closed now. So now that all of these are closed, I have a nice little notebook that I can now decorate. Easy as that. And if you wanted to hand close these, all you have to do is squeeze them closed, go one by one and just squeeze them shut. So you really don't need a cinch to be able to do this. Just take your fingers and work them closed the way that you want. So now I'm just going to take a few stickers. I'm not going to do this whole book with you guys. I'm just going to take a few stickers and I am going to just put some down to give you an idea of how we can decorate these sweet little books. So for this one, I am just going to go like every third page and add some stickers. I like this one that says wonderful. Put that there. Then I can go through. I can take this one that says friends. We can put that one right there and just keep going through your book until you have yours the way that you want it. So y'all, that is a very quick and easy way to make this beautiful little notebook. I am going to find a sticker just for the outside. And I like this one that says life lesson. So I'm going to put it right there. And y'all, there we have book number two. Super, super easy to make. Look at how pretty and upscale this actually looks. You have that protective cover that you see on so many of the higher priced notebooks and journals, but we're able to take those Dollar Tree chopping mats and make our own. If you don't have Dollar Tree chopping mats, you can also try using some of your acetate or window film, whatever it is that you have that you might want to put on to give it a protective cover. Or if you want to lay down some clear contact paper onto the actual paper and cut it out, you can also get a protective cover that way. I think anyone would love to have this or would love to purchase it. Make some of these for your craft fair. Make some for friends and coworkers. Make some for yourself. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's awesome way to make a notebook. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.